Welcome, everybody, to this panel discussion on the first Global Blood Fest, sponsored by the Open RAN Alliance, or ORAN. My name is Dhruv Gupta. Uh, I'm with AT&T, and I'm currently the co-chair of ORAN Alliance Working Group 2. And it's my pleasure to host this panel with my colleagues. Uh, next slide, please. So just a bit of introduction to the ORAN Alliance and the Blood Fest. So ORAN Alliance is a consortium or a global community of more than 200 members, including mobile operators, vendors, as well as research and academic institutions. And all of these members are committed to evolving the current radio access networks based on the core principles of openness and intelligence. The key mission for ORAN Alliance is to drive our industry towards a more open, multi-vendor, virtualized, and interoperable network stage. And the ORAN Alliance accomplishes this in many ways. Uh, it publishes RAN technical specifications uh, related to the interfaces that are defined by the ORAN community. And it also releases open software via its ORAN Software Community, or OSC. In order to showcase the nature of uh, the interfaces that are being defined by ORAN, including the O1, A1, E2, and front hall specification, and to highlight the multi-vendor interoperability aspect, ORAN conducted its first global plug fest in December of 2019. This was attended by 30-plus operator and vendor partners, and altogether they demonstrated 10 different scenarios and use cases that both highlighted and validated the interface specifications that have been published by ORAN so far. The breadth of the use cases varied from demonstrating the open front hall interface between the DU and the RU units in the ORAN architecture to also demonstrating the O1 interface and the ORAN defined SMO and their role in enabling vendor agnostic FCAPs of RAN nodes. The first version of this uh, ORAN plug fest occurred in North America on December 5th, 2019. Uh, this happened as a mix of both online participation as well as on-site demonstrations conducted at the Open Wireless Lab at Rutgers University in New Jersey. The demonstrations were conducted by various companies including AT&T, Comscope, Ericsson, High Street Technologies, Nokia, and Wipro. The companies demonstrated four use cases related to the ORAN O1 interface and an ONAP-based service management and orchestration platform, or the SMO. And the use case is focused on demonstrating the physical network function, or PNF, plug-and-play, bulk performance management data collection, RAN optimization use case related to PCI and RSI optimization, and also basic FCAPs of 4G LTE small cells. And just a quick nod to the large number of members from all of the different companies that were behind making this plug fest a great success. Without their contributions, we would not have been able to demonstrate the use cases successfully. So thank you to all of them. Now I will go ahead and introduce our panel members that will lead us through today's discussion. First, we have Zach Lovo from Comscope. He's a product line manager for small cells at Comscope and is responsible for the one cell solution including service management and orchestration. We also have Ben Chung from Nokia, who's a system architect in 5G Cloud RAN and ONAP, and he has been working in the wireless industry for over 23 years and focuses on ONAP RAN use cases. We also have Michaela Bevilacqua from Ericsson, who's a researcher in RAN standard and technology organization, and she represents Ericsson at ONAP for RAN-related topics. And finally, we also have Haseeb Akhtar from Ericsson, who is responsible for end-to-end -end network evolution at Ericsson and also represents Ericsson at ORAN Alliance's Working Group 1, which covers use cases and overall architecture. So now I will hand it off to Zach to lead us through the first demo. Zach? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, Zach Lovell here. Um, for this plug fest, uh, what we wanted to demonstrate was that legacy 4G devices implemented using 3GPP compliant uh, data models 
could be adapted to follow an O1 compliant uh, service management model. Uh, and this is really done in recognition that Open RAN uh, really needs to consider all aspects of the network. It's more than just about radios, and it requires a uniform service management orchestration interfaces with an ability to also manage uh, legacy devices. Uh, and for this demo, we deployed a fully functional end-to-end -end setup uh, at the Rutgers Open Wireless Lab. We used a mix of real and simulated one-cell uh, CRAM baseband controller devices, uh, each communicating to an instance of our uh, TR01 adapter. Uh, the adapter translates the protocols and data model parameters between the device and the ONAP functions. And so from the perspective of ONAP or from the service management orchestration layers, the adapter is essentially the device itself. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, next slide, please. Uh, and so in this protest, we demonstrated three uh, O1 aligned use cases using ONAP uh, together with the uh, TR01 adapter. Uh, the first use case we demonstrated was a device initiated uh, physical network function registration. Uh, this enables a new device to become known to the service management layer, thus enabling FCAPs for it. The basic flow is that the device will send a TR69 bootstrap to the adapter, which in turn translates that into a VES PNF registration message, which gets sent on to DCIE. From there, it gets forwarded to DMAP, uh, the messaging interface, uh, <clears throat> and from there, SDNR then receives the notification. Um, <clears throat> that closes the loop and now allows the remainder of the use cases to take place. Um, the second use case was a demonstration of TR69 fault events being sent by the device, with the adapter then generating a corresponding uh, VES alarm, and then the VES alarm follows the exact same path uh, through DCA to DMAP, and ultimately where an SDNR is notified of the event, uh, which can be observed through the uh, ODLUX uh, user interface. Lastly, we demoed uh, focusing on configuration management aspects. Um, so with the adapter, we provided Yang definitions that included the broadband forum TR181 and TR196 uh, data models. And these are the same data models that were used by the device uh, itself. These uh, Yang models were in fact presented to SDNR by the adapter during the initial bootstrap and registration procedures. Um, using ODLUX, we were then able to go into SDNR and trigger it to request the device to uh, uh, get parameter values from the device, uh, as well as the ability to edit or change the values uh, on the device itself. Um, these three essential use cases demonstrate that legacy LTE devices can be adapted to follow the O1-based management model. Um, now I'll hand it over to Ben, who will share with you details of Nokia's plug and play with SON uh, demo. Ben, you're on mute. Sorry, uh, I'll be talking about plug and play in ONAP. Uh, it happens in five stages. It's been developed since um, the ONAP release two, the Beijing release. Um, in the first stage, design time uh, modeling happens where basically a user of ONAP can define the services that the service provider intends to use and defines the resources that are associated with those services. Um, in stage two, the services are, uh, instances of those services are created um, and basically that allows ONAP to um, declare that it needs and is, and is expecting certain kinds of resources to connect to it. And then finally, the in stage three, the um, the PNF itself is delivered on site and powers up, and and then eventually sends a, a PNF registration VES event, virtual event streaming event over O1 through to the P PRH, the PNF registration handler, <clears throat> where in stage four, uh, ONAP becomes aware essentially of that new uh, PNF that's come online. And the PRH then takes that message, uh, publishes it onto the internal messaging bus, the DMAP bus, <clears throat> And the ANEI entry for that PNF can then be updated. And um, this allows ONAP to recognize and then operate and do things with that PNF as it's officially now registered into ANEI. And also, and finally in the stage five, the PNF uh, is, can be configured and activated. Um, <clears throat> so 
um, the the demo basically showed this flow of being able to recognize and uh, go through the paces of PRH to show that um, ONAP can uh, see and recognize a, a PNF. And that's what was uh, demoed. Okay, next. Uh, another long-standing use case has is the self-optimizing network and physical cell identifier <clears throat> um, use case led um, largely by AT&T, but in collaboration with many others. Uh, the idea of, of uh, self-optimizing networks has actually been around since 4G, uh, but largely will come to fruition in 5G, where it, there are three principal um, main ideas, um, self-optimization, self-configuration, um, and self-healing. So uh, building more intelligence into the network <clears throat> and uh, automation of control. Uh, and uh, PCI is just one basic example of SON. An idea here is that uh, uh, cells within a, a wireless network are assigned uh, PCI values and there's only a limited pool of PCI values that are, are, are available. And you want to avoid collisions where neighboring cells have the same PCI value and confusion where adjacent cells have this exact same PCI value. So within ONAP, there's a control loop that has been developed uh, use, uh, using uh, OF, the optimization uh, platform component within ONAP. Um, it can evaluate policies and make decisions and send down new values to the RAN. <coughs> and, and then over O1, it can receive information from the RAN network um, that's then collected through the DCAE data collection and analysis um, to look at the values that have been assigned in the network. So basically this demo uh, demonstrates this one, one of the uh, interesting, more interesting applications of, of SON. Okay. Hi everyone, Michaela from Ericsson. Uh, the Ericsson demo at the first hour on Plug Facts focused on ONDEM interface used by the 5G RAM network function to interwork with the uh, service management orchestrator implemented by ONOP. The demo has been performed from an Ericsson lab in Ireland where an ONOP Alto release was installed to interwork with the real Ericsson GNOP. We demonstrated the two use cases, the plug and play and uh, the bulk PM data collection. And uh, with the help of ONAP, it has been possible to show GNOB event notification, configuration operation, and data file transfer based on ORAN Alliance one specification. To provide secure connection, TLS protocol has been used over the old interfaces. Next slide, please. Let's have a look to the two use cases. On the left, the GNOB auto discovery mechanism is shown. After the service and the resource instantiation in ONAP, a netconf young connection has been established with the network function using an ONAP controller workflow. Uh, ONAP CDS component has been used to execute a customer specific workflow through the SDNC. And the XNF uh, will react to the net NetConf application configuration, choosing the registration event request towards the on. On the right, uh, you can see the, the other use case, uh, the GNOB data for collection. Um, Ericsson has contributed two different um, microservices in ONAP, uh, the PM mapper and the data file collector that are responsible of the collection of the file and the mapping of a PM counter on best events. PM data are then available over uh, the DMAP bus, both as file and event. Next slide. Hasib, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Michaela. Uh, Hasib from Ericsson here. So as you can see that the, con the our contributions to ORA and OSC and, and ONAP, all of this open source forum is helping to foster innovation across 5G. And uh, in order to handle one of the, the key you know, topic about sustainable business model uh, related to open source, we have been in, you know, engaged with the customers and the partners uh, and, and trying to jointly create um, a business model that would be beneficial for both uh, 
the customers as well as for the suppliers. And this type of events like Parkfest you know, helps to, to drive towards that goal. Uh, we are also pushing the industry towards um, agile and faster development by participating in open source in general and in particular this uh, podcast. And we hope to, to collaborate across all ecosystem players to achieve a, a global scale in developing open systems. Uh, back to you, Dhruv. All right, thank you everyone. That was a great presentation and thanks for the great overview. A lot of great progress made uh, with this platform. So before we have uh, some question and answers, uh, I wanna pose a couple of questions to each of our panel members. Um, so Zach, starting from you, um, can you please share some of the key lessons that you learned uh, out of this Bloodfest? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, what I'd say is, you know, the, the most interesting thing is that the devil is in the details. And uh, as we went through this, there are a number of things that, you know, we discovered along the way. And, and some of it may seem very basic. Oh, we're building an adapter and it converts one thing to another. But you get into little things like the different notion between what is a client and a server, uh, and you end up having an adapter that needs to have two different server interfaces uh, as opposed to just a simple uh, a protocol translation. Um, and so it's only through real use cases and real world problems that we're able to uh, uncover and find these sorts of issues. And what we found was that while you know ONAP had a reasonable level of maturity, um, that maturity didn't necessarily extend to every use case. And so as we're trying to, to build out these use cases, we're doing an environment where the standards are still being defined, a lot of the underlying technology is still being defined. Um, the only way that you can sort it out is get all the stakeholders together and really execute these real world test cases. And so that I think was really exciting about this plug test, uh, and I think the real value of the future plug tests to come. Thank you, Zach. Ben, uh, same question for you, some of the key lessons learned from your perspective. Yeah, so I think one of the uh, more interesting things is, you know, just watching a community of, a diverse community of many companies come together to uh, show something meaningful and useful and ONAP has really been uh, very interesting and amazing. I think it's one of the key lessons learned also is, I think, you know, just to give us runway time to work out bugs and uh, watching problems in the lab get resolved, you know, does take time um, and <clears throat> always have a backup. So, you know, we, we had uh, had many planning meetings and I think those have those helped the actual eventual uh, plug fest go very smoothly. Uh, we had contingencies to, to, for slides and demos and recording, pre-recorded stuff. So I think that helped a lot. Great. And finally, uh, Michaela, uh, from your perspective, some of the key lessons. Yeah, I uh, want to highlight the engagement of the people. Open source community will not be what is today without uh, really the active participation of the people from different backgrounds and skills. All of us have given feedbacks and helped uh, one another in solving really common problems. And uh, the open discussion with the service provider and the vendor to understand the different perspectives, uh, needs, priority are all very important. And it also provides us the opportunity to explore new technology and innovate. And uh, we see a coordinated effort across the relevant uh, standardization forum and open source project creating a sustainable environment. Yeah, thank you. So I guess, yeah, I think collaboration is the key and uh, Fox and Plugfest really help us to uh, demonstrate, right, all the specifications and put together all the software. Um, now I have one more question, maybe, um, Zach, again, starting with you. Uh, can you give us um, any information about any future demonstrations that we can anticipate? Um, you know, so uh, one of the things that we look to be supporting at the end of this year is a demonstration related to CBRS uh, SAS domain proxies. Um, and that will largely be leveraging our CBRS devices for that activity. And then we're also looking at uh, future use cases, uh, kind of rounding out more FCAPS functionality and more O1 interface capabilities. Um, and we're really working closely with AT&T to see um, uh, what we can best target for 2021. Uh, in that area. Thank you. Uh, ben Hubbard from Nokia's perspective, what, what can we anticipate? 
So we're involved in, in as with a lot of companies in, in the community, in a, in a lot of the upcoming use cases I see um, are related around like end-to-end -end network slicing. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, uh, 3GPP ONAP and ORAN alignment uh, use cases like the standard defined uh, VEST notifications and A1 adapter extension, um, policy extension use cases. Uh, so there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up, I think, CMPV2, IPv6, MDONs, and Etsy, more Etsy use cases and uh, enhanced software upgrade. So I expect to see a lot of interesting things. This is just the beginning, really, and I think we'll see some interesting stuff coming down the pipe. Great. And Hasid, maybe from Ericsson's point of view, what can we anticipate in the near future? Yes, uh, thanks, Rob. I mean, as you all know, that it has been a challenge to do face-to-face -face demonstrations uh, due to COVID-19 implications. Uh, but having said that, um, uh, you know, Ericsson has committed uh, to participate in the virtual Oran Blackfest 2 at the end of this month, and we will be presenting three demos there. Uh, the first one is on A1 interface support uh, in G Node B, leveraging a couple of Ericsson contribution contributed OSC com components, uh, A1 adapter and policy management service. The next demo is on uh, PM counter management over O1 interface. And the third demo uh, is on software upgrade, uh, also over O1 interface. And in addition to, to that, we are considering to participate in Oran sponsored Mobile World Congress North America's virtual demo at the end of October. And we're also hoping that uh, the 2021 Mobile World Congress will have some level of face-to-face uh, -face aspects and uh, hopefully we'll be able to plan something in that. Uh, but stay tuned for it. Thank you. So great stuff to look forward to. And finally, quickly, uh, I would call uh, Tracy Van Brockel from at and to give us a quick sneak peek on the second Plugfest being organized by Oran Alliance. So the second Plugfest is in multiple regions, North America, Europe, uh, Asia, uh, Japan, and India. India is a newcomer. Uh, in North America, there will be two parts to this event or activity. Uh, part one is it's a plug fest and workshops, uh, as Hasib mentioned, mostly virtual on account of the COVID-19 crisis, and that's the end of this month. And I'm very pleased that uh, both Ericsson and Nokia are uh, you know, bringing three scenarios each uh, to share with the 5G LTE ecosystem. Uh, the second part of the POC plug fest in North America will coincide with the release of ORAN Software Community Release 3. It's called the Cherry Release. And uh, Zach, that's when we're uh, eagerly anticipating the uh, Comscope uh, CBRS SAS. Uh, maybe, um, you know, with additional vendors, co you know, contributing as well. And I just want to thank everybody on the panel for collegiality, collaboration, and it's just so great to work with so many bright people who work together so well and who are so much fun. So see you at the next POC plug fest. Thanks, Tracy. And thank you to all our panel members for the great discussion and for the great overview. And now we can move on to the question and answer session. Thank you. Hello everyone. We have now activated the phone bridge so the speakers can answer your questions live. Uh, please enter your questions in the Q&A chat with speakers. All right. Hi, this is uh, Drew Putta from AT&T. So uh, I see a couple of questions here. So let me just quickly address those. Um, in terms of the duration of the plug fest, uh, the first plug fest uh, was uh, conducted uh, for one day in North America. Um, of course, the um, the activities and the preparations for that 
uh, began, you know, weeks to months ahead of time. Um, and it, uh, it was all the demos, et cetera, occurred uh, on the final day. Um, of course, the, the second web test is being conducted right now, uh, and the total duration for that is actually uh, two weeks. Uh, so it started last week, and it's uh, ongoing this week as well. Um, and then also in terms of the reports uh, from web test number two, so that's ongoing, like I said, this week. Um, so, you know, I'm sure we'll start seeing uh, some reports and uh, outcomes of that blood test uh, very soon uh, as it wraps up uh, later this week. All right. Um, so let me address some questions for speakers here. Um, so maybe uh, starting with um, Zach. Um, Zach, um, could you maybe talk a little bit about how Comscope aligns across uh, different uh, open initiatives, uh, such as uh, ORAN, uh, OSB, uh, ONAP. You know, there are so many. Uh, can you can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so so Comscope is is fully committed to um, open standards, and in particular, open RAN. Uh, so we're active in, in a number of working groups there. Uh, we're also active in, in the Small Cell Forum. Um, and uh, we're also members of, of course, Linux Foundation and working in, in, in ONAP. Um, <clears throat> and so we have a number of contributions that, that we've um, uh, made and, and will continue to make. And, and you know, we really see um, a lot of vibrant engagement in those forums. And I think it's, it's really great to, to see it. And, um, and we are, you know, committed to continuing to uh, support uh, ORAN, ONAP, and, uh, and so on. All right, thank you. And um, uh, I'll see if uh, Michaela has her audio, and then maybe Michaela, do you want to also talk about how, uh, from Ericsson's perspective, how do you balance across the multiple open initiatives that you're involved in? Do you hear me? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so the the um, open source alignment is a key for um, Ericsson. We are active in Oran, Oran Alliance, OSC, and NONAP. Uh, we want to avoid fragmentation between open source initiatives, and we, encourage, uh, we try to encourage the reuse of the common components. It's always uh, a challenge, uh, because you risk that a different uh, open initiative want to drive. As a company, we want to stimulate the interworking, and uh, we try to use the same team. As uh, an open source uh, uh, active company, we encourage to have a monthly meeting between the different uh, open source initiatives and uh, ad hoc meeting with the different open source initiatives and uh, the key stakeholders. All right, thank you. And um, maybe one more question here. So um, maybe Hasib, if you can help us with this. Um, can you talk about, you know, there is some <clears throat> obvious challenges that people talk about, about the business model for open RAN systems and so on. So could you give a brief uh, perspective on some of these challenges in making these open systems real? Yeah, uh, thanks, Rup. So I think one of the uh, you know, key challenges to make open systems real is the lack of contributions and investment from the key stakeholders. Um, and what I mean by that is to really put up developers to, to do the real work, not just uh, you know, come up with the requirements and then just uh, wait and see how it goes. Because without really uh, serious participation and or investment, uh, things will not move. The second one is, you know, sometimes there are too much focus on the processes. So, you know, processes are good uh, when needed, but that could also create red taps. So uh, we believe that the release cycles are still too long. So, so something needs to be done on that. And then sometimes we are 
kind of um, you know very much attached to the not invented hair mindset. So if I'm coming from ONAP and trying to do something in OSC or in OM, then uh, we try to bring our um, own kind of mindset to with it. Uh, so that also needs to be broadened. We need to look for the, the best solutions for the community. And then, as Michaela mentioned, um, lack of uh, you know, alignment across projects uh, with, within the initiative itself and also with other related initiatives uh, should be addressed. And, and finally, you know, open does not necessarily mean free. Um, so we have to also examine as an industry uh, on that concept and must develop a viable open-based business model uh, by addressing some of these concerns. So I think that's that's all I could add. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We're at time, so I'm going to go ahead and end the webcast here shortly. But um, you can continue the discussion uh, on the Slack channel. Um, Stephanie, do you have the name of that Slack channel? Yes, I posted it in the chat. It is the number two AI networking edge RAN channel. So thank you so Great. much for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you all.